Umao <laughs> Dr. Nawang Togme came to the United States a few months ago for the first time with his cousin to serve as a translator. One of the first things we did when he returned to San Antonio was we went to Houston so he could see his patients again, have follow-up visits and see how everybody's doing. And through my own mistake, I happened to drive him not to Houston. I misunderstood, and we ended up driving to Bastrop. According to the woman who had organized um, his visit to Houston, uh, there had been over 100 people who initially had wanted to see Dr. Tokme. Um, and there were 35 very determined souls who had waited three hours while we drove all over Texas trying to get him there. and. You know, even though I was horrified that I had made this horrible mistake, I was, couldn't help but take note, thinking, my God, these people have been waiting here this long. The word must have gotten out that he was very effective in, in his results with the people that he saw in July, and so the people who came back six months later were not gonna miss the opportunity Many of the people who have uh, come to Tokme since he's been in San Antonio uh, come to him for medical advice or advice about their health, have been uh, themselves practitioners of various alternative health uh, modes. Massage therapists, acupuncture, a woman who practices Ayurvedic medicine. Um, this has been really interesting to see how people who themselves are involved in alternative health care as practitioners have come to Tokme for advice about their own physical conditions. There's an understanding that the healing methods developed in Tibetan medicine over thousands of years have been developed by highly dedicated practitioners who use their experience and the experience of those who came before to know how to help. When they read the pulses, they are able to tell sort of some of the basic qualities of that person that then determine where to go next. So they're taking the, the basic nature of the patient, the climate that they live in, the time of year, the time of day, their physical habits, their diet habits, their emotional habits, mental habits, spiritual habits, all these aspects are taken into account. And so over the centuries, the Tibetan physicians have carefully recorded, studied, and learned how to successfully help people. Uh, <laughs> Um, 
One of the things I appreciate the most about Tibetans and Buddhism in general is the very realistic view they have about health and life and death. And death is not something to be avoided. Of course, we want to live as healthy a life as we can, uh, but there comes a time when you have to let the body go. Somebody like Tokme, who's from a very young age, has studied these thoughts, and you can feel it in him as he's treating his patients. This sort of acceptance of reality in its in its own way is probably the most beneficial thing for your health. When you encounter one of these physicians, you have a sense, as with Tokme, that you're not just sitting with Tokme and hearing what he thinks your condition is, or he believes from his experience of you. But no, he brings with him every physician that has come before him, who he's learned from, whose experience he benefits from. So he's bringing all of this. When he's sitting there with you, he's bringing with him centuries of medicinal know-how. And you have a sense of that, that it's, that it's a lineage that's sitting there with you. There's this tradition with the Tibetan physician that they also have devoted themselves to a spiritual practice for the benefit of all beings. You really can feel that. It comes across and, um, you know, there's, there's an honoring of a long, long tradition you feel you yourself can rely upon this long lineage of wisdom. Human beings haven't changed all that much in, you know, three, four thousand years. And, uh, and so these practitioners can be relied upon.